We began the last installment with the case of Regina versus Prince. It concluded with this question. Can either the Bramwell or the Brett approach work in general? To refresh our recollection, those approaches were defined this way. Baron Bramwell states this principle. If what the defendant knew he was doing is immoral, mistake about other elements cannot exculpate. In Judge Brett's view, if what the defendant knew he was doing is criminal, mistake about other elements cannot exculpate. Except for one crucial word, the two principles are alike. Now suppose we have to construe a statute that contains a bunch of elements but lacks any culpability language, like maliciously or recklessly. The doctrine of mens rea requires culpability to be read into the statute. Both Bramwell and Brett agree about that. But as to which elements must culpability be shown? Bramwell and Brett agree that culpability need not be shown as to each and every element. Which are the elements as to which culpability must be shown? Here is where the two jurists disagree. Which is the better view? Or more to the point, is either of them much help as a general guide to interpreting what's in a criminal code? For example, consider statutory rape. Somewhat simplified, a traditional statutory rape statute makes it an offense for a male to have sexual intercourse with a female other than his wife who is below a certain age. Females below the statutory age are legally unable to consent to intercourse, hence the term statutory rape. Suppose the statute lacks culpability language altogether. The doctrine of mens rea still applies, let's assume, to the sexual intercourse element and the female not the spouse element. This means that an accused could defend against a statutory rape charge by offering evidence of mistaken belief that these elements were absent. I leave it to your imaginations how that might go. What we're interested in is whether the prosecution has to prove the defendant's culpability as to the age of the victim element. This in turn will determine whether a defendant's mistake about the victim's age is material. The Bramwell approach asks, is it immoral for a man to have sex with a female he's not married to? The casebook calls the Bramwell approach the moral wrong principle. What do you think? What does the community think? Is it even thought to be inappropriate now to have extramarital or premarital sex? We could easily multiply examples. Suppose a defendant bought an ounce of marijuana. In the jurisdiction, possession of an ounce or less is not punishable by imprisonment, but possession of more than an ounce is. If the defendant believed the amount was no more than an ounce, but it turned out his seller threw in an extra fraction, can the defendant be convicted and sentenced to prison? For Bramwell, the issue turns on whether possession of marijuana in any amount, however small, is immoral. Is it? The point is that there is widespread, seemingly intractable disagreement about the morality of extramarital sex and marijuana use. This means that the Bramwell approach does not give us determinate guidance when we most need it. Let's try the Brett approach. Does it do any better in the statutory rape case? The Brett approach asks, is what the defendant knew he was doing illegal? The casebook calls this the lesser crime principle. Applied here, it asks whether fornication is illegal, fornication being extramarital sex. 
we might think, ha, huh, of course not. We would be wrong. In eight states, including Georgia, fornication is still a statutory offense. After the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Lawrence v. Texas, these are of doubtful constitutionality, but we are still left uncertain about the culpability required to be shown to convict someone of statutory rape. Clarity is what we demand of the criminal law, and neither the Bramwell nor the Brett approaches deliver it. What about the over an ounce of, a mar of marijuana case? Isn't Brett better in terms of clarity? That depends on how clear the rest of the criminal code is and what it happens to contain. The ordinary citizen proceeds at her peril. I conclude that both the Bramwell and Brett approaches represent a disaster area. The drafters of the model penal code strove above all to bring order and clarity to this unruly area. The model penal code approach deserves our close attention. We will begin in the next part with its doctrine regarding ignorance and mistake.